Yay! Hello, hello! Do you want to know the secrets of pie? Do you want to know all about how to make the best crust? What is the best crust? Do you want to know about fillings? Do you want to know about decorations? Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Do you want to know? Well, yes, of course you do. Well, y'all, hang on because I am so excited. Just, just so excited. Today, I have on Erin McDowell, author of The Book of Pie, and we are heading, it's all the year is pie season as far as I'm concerned, but I will say that I think that fall is like peak pie season. We've got the holidays coming up. It's apple season. It's pecans are fresh. It's pumpkin, sweet potato. So I don't know. P fall and pie seem to go together. And I have this week, Erin McDonald from the author of The Book of Pie, New York Times bestseller, absolutely genius book. And she's a guest with me today. And you can win a free copy. I want you to go to my Instagram feed, look for the cover of this book. You're going to like me. You're going to like Erin and you're going to enter to win. And we're going to draw a winner on Monday. So we're going to bring Erin on and then you let us know if we have any questions. Hi. Hey. Yay. Thanks so much for having me. me. Yes. yes. I'm so happy Thank to be so here. I'm, I'm just tickled to tickled to death that you're here. And I do. Do you think that fall is, I think that, I know that you probably think that pies are all year round, but I just think that fall really shines with pie. Yes. We live every day, week, month, like it is pie day around here I'm in this sure. house. However, I do kind of always talk about this year being like my Super Bowl. Like, and I am not a sports person, but take that for what it is worth that I make more pies around this time of year than any other year. We're churning them out. And I'm answering so many questions around this time of year, too, because everyone is just like wanting their holiday pies to be perfect and impress and all of that. Well, it's so crazy because like, I don't know, what is it about pie that just scares the bejesus out of people? Like people are so intimidated. I know. Pie. <laughs> well, on the one hand, I think there's a couple of different reasons why. Yep. But I think one of the reasons, and I feel like you're going to understand this very well, because I grew up baking from a lot of like very old cookbooks, um, learning to bake from recipes that my grandma passed down to me and yep. things like that. And there's a lot of mistakes in those recipes. They're not always written very well. You know, back then, sometimes recipes weren't even tested. And people who were writing the recipes were really good bakers, but maybe not really good recipe writers. So I actually attribute a huge amount of what has happened with pie um, as, as some of these like tips that have been printed in books for years and years and years, and we've all treated it as the be all end all that's what it needs to be when really, you know, there might be some things that we're not doing right that, you know, and th that the grandmas never taught us. That's the other right. thing. You know, some of the right. people writing those recipes kept a little bit of those tidbits for themselves. I don't do that. I want everyone to have all the tidbits. <laughs> no, I know. It. I know. It. Well, I jumped right into questions, but and I know so many folks that are watching today um, know about you, Erin, but will you please share a little bit about your story? Will you share your story with our audience? Yes, I would love to. Um, I'm originally from Kansas. I'm originally from Lawrence, Kansas, and uh, I come from a very food loving family. And I figured out when I was about 16 years old that I wanted to go to culinary school, pastry school and become a professional pastry person. However, when I got to pastry school, I realized that actually what I loved was all that stuff I was doing at home with my mom, with my grandma. So I decided to take all that professional training and find a way to use my life to celebrate people cooking and baking at home. And um, I just think that, you know, some I'm very lucky that I did get to go to pastry school, but not everybody is going to, and not everybody needs to, especially if you just enjoy food and cooking and baking as you know, as a great pastime and as a great source of nourishment and so many other things. So I went to pastry school, right? I got my first job in a bakery when I was 16. I worked there for a couple of years, got some experience, went to pastry school at the Culinary Institute of America. And then I started my journey working with other authors um, on their cookbooks. I did a lot of food styling and recipe testing and recipe editing and ghost writing and kind of wore a lot of different hats. Um, uh -huh. And then 
after wearing a lot of different hats for a few years, someone someone asked me if I wanted to wear the author hat and it was a dream come true. And um, I wrote my first book, which was called The Fearless Baker. And this is my second baby and it is extra special, the book on pie. Yeah, that's a, well, you know, I have to tell you, because this is true. And some of you that are cookbook authors that are read, watching this now, they know the second book is a hard one. You know, like the first book is always this like big thing and everyone gets excited about this like new, new author, new meat, new whatever you want to look at it. And then the second book is often a sophomore second, right? It's like a little hard to, girl, this is like, <laughs> you like wrote a classic on thank your you. book. I mean, you really I, did. So I'm just, I'm so happy for you. Well, thank you. I, you know, I also think like so many things, like with cooking and baking, we get better every time we do it. My first book is great and I love it. I highly recommend it. It's especially great for people just starting out baking right. because it explains a lot of the science of how things yep. work. But if anybody, anyone who knows me knows that I really love to dive deep into a subject mm -hmm. because I think that's the best chance we all have at understanding it better. So this was actually one of the things I pitched for my first book. And, and they said at the time, they were like, maybe not a single subject cookbook for your first book. So when the time came for a second book, I was like, you're going to let me talk about pie now, right? It's time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, you kind of have to bully publishing companies sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stand up for yourself for sure. You gotta, you gotta, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. everybody, everyone knows what they're doing. And I certainly don't know always what all the goings on behind there, but I do, you know, at the end of the day, when you believe that you have something to say on a subject, and just like I said to you, there are a lot of books about pie out there that didn't have some of this pieces of information in it that I, and so I was just like, it need, I need to write it. I need to. I got to. No, it's true. That's it. No, it's really good. And it's like, no, and I, I think that, and I think, I mean, I don't think, I know this sort of passion and, and this commitment to that deep dive on that subject and you're recognizing that grandmas might be wrong and the rest, you know, the recipes and stuff <laughs> Only like that. sometimes. <laughs> Only sometimes. And certainly not your grandmother or my grandmother, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, that, you know, that commitment to that, because I think that people just get, whether it's the kitchen or pie, or we were talking about croissant before we started, like people just get paralyzed with fear about it's just cooking y'all. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if it, if you mess it up, throw it in the trash. I mean, it, it, that would be unfortunate. Right. And hopefully or compost it or <laughs> compost it. Yeah. Or like put a bunch of whipped cream on it and serve it as a trifle. It anyway. I mean, there's, yep. there's 10,000 ways to like, you know, save things, but, People get so scared. This is like kind of like life too, right? People get so scared of something. They're just, they're so convinced they're going to fail that they don't even want to try it. Completely. And I, love and I mean, your book. Oh, no, I was just going to say that is, that's actually why I called my first book The Fearless Baker because I was like, yep. I just want you to read these recipes and just go in and make them and not have fear because nothing's going to taste good if you're baking scaredness into it. We got to bake love into it only truth <laughs> oh my god preach girl that's true let's hurry let's see who's here all right well um we're gonna start out with my mom and glad to meet you love making pies mama yay oh my gosh well i automatically love you because i love all mamas <laughs> i know i have got a good one too i'm really lucky she my favorite pie that she makes is my her chocolate pie which was actually her great my great aunt's pie oh. i think yeah, so you it's know, like it's from, good. It's lasted generations. Uh, well, this is the other thing, that, which is funny. Like, you know, I went to culinary school and I came home and I tried to fix that pie because it wasn't made right. You know, it wasn't Couldn't made be. according to technique. Girl, I mean, I screwed it up. Right. Like <laughs> it, I tried to make it like creme patissiere and it it's basically like you shake flour and milk and cocoa together. Like it makes no sense. You know what I mean? Like it just and it just works and it works and it works. And that's and so, the. I tried that's to even it. totally. And I was gonna say that's a great example of how like sometimes grandmas and great aunts are completely right. <laughs> no, 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 no. I I was gonna say also that uh, my my mom uh, she has claimed. I just think you would enjoy this little story. Uh -huh. She said that everyone thought she was a really great pie baker before she like became a mom, and then 
after she gave birth to me, suddenly she said she could no longer bake pies as well. Of course, she actually is a great pie baker, but she thinks that she passed it on to me somehow. And I thought that you would think that was a funny, she's like been telling people this for years, like Erin stole my pie mojo. I don't know how, but she took it. Oh my gosh, that's so great. I kind of love that though. I mean, I, I mean, if that's how it, it happened. I would take it, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's good. Oh, my gosh, y'all. Well, listen, if y'all are watching, please make sure you go to my Instagram feed and um, look for this cover. Look for the, yeah, look for the cover. And let's talk about this book because um, we are coming into the Super Bowl season. Y'all, the photographs are amazing. Um, you. Everything you need to know to bake perfect pies. I mean, that's that's a statement, <laughs> sister. That I remember when we were coming up with the title and the subtitle, I was like, I kept saying to everyone, I just need it to be definitive. That's all I care about because I do think that everything that I've learned about baking pies is in this book. That is amazing. That is amazing. So, okay, y'all, we've got doughs and crust, decor and toppings, fruit pies, custard pies, cream chiffon and cold set pies. And then savory pies. I don't think savory pies get enough love. I do love a savory pie. Completely agree. And I could have made that chapter five times as long if I had been given the page space. Oh, I, I mean, like, what is better than, like, it's basically gravy and usually meat wrapped in pastry. Completely. What? And cheese, maybe, on top, you know? I, I mean, I think... The best part about pie for me is the contrasting textures and then sometimes serving it warm when that applies. So savory uh -huh. pies, it's like a given because they're always going to be served or often are served warm. Okay. And let's talk about, because you have got a mean Instagram feed. I want to talk about the sturdy pie factor. <laughs> I think that sturdy pie, I'm a sturdy girl. I like a sturdy <laughs> meal. You know? <laughs> And I think a sturdy pie, like to be able to eat a piece of pie, like essentially like a taco or something, you know what I mean? Like not even, you know what I mean? Like in your hand. Yeah, like a slice of pizza. We always yes. say we just pick it up and, you know, oh are even God. easier than pizza because you don't have to fold it. <laughs> and it it's, means um, like a, that crust. Absolutely. I think this is actually one of the things that has happened through the years. And I will say before I go off on the sturdy pie challenge, I just want to acknowledge those of you out there that enjoy a soggy bottom because I've heard from a lot of you. A lot of people are like, hey, Aaron, a soggy uh, bottom on a pumpkin pie is my favorite part of the pumpkin pie. And I'm like, you know what? Go for it. I'm I'm happy for you. Um, I prefer when it is crisp because that contrast of textures, like I said, is my favorite part. And also, if we're being really technical, it's not super great to eat underbaked dough because flour isn't actually good to digest in large quantities if it hasn't been cooked. It can really upset your stomach. So um, when pastry is underbaked, you know, a lot of times it still tastes good because it tastes like butter and it's soft and kind of gooey. But underbaked pastry, it's really, it could actually even upset your stomach potentially. Um, so the Sturdy Pie Challenge is really a celebration about learning to bake a pie properly because for years, maybe in an attempt to make the recipes shorter or seem easier, you know, par baking was often taken out of the equation or a lengthy enough bake time. People say to yes. me sometimes, are you, are you sure that is the right oven temp? Are you sure that's the right amount of time? I'm like, yes, this pie may take you an hour and a half to bake but it will be uh, worth it. <laughs> it is so true. No, no, because it's like, but there's two things to it. So first of all, your sturdy pies, um, they're brown enough, right? Which is, I, I think, I mean, when I was, a, you know, a child a million years ago when with an apprentice with Natalie Dupree, she always called it French brown. That was like mm, yes. term from the beginning. Like, it's not brown enough. It needs to be French brown. And so I had like French brown, like drilled into my head from, you know, Love that. culinary infancy because uh, I would bake something and she's like, it's not dark enough. And I'd be like, well, uh, you know, trying to please her. And she's like, go back. And then now I know, as of course I know, you know, and so folks listening to us will know, I mean, chemical stuff happens when the, you know, when it gets brown enough and it, the flavor blossoms and it's not just the butter. It's what happens with the wheat. So it's, it's not just Completely. the steady, It's also flavor. Completely. And, you know, getting that texture all the way through, you know, another thing that I hear a lot as a food stylist is how do you get such pretty slices of pie? Well, I bake them long enough and it's actually very easy to slice it because the crust, then everything stays where it's put. 
Uh, runny pie filling is also often, if you're making a fruit pie, for example, that's a byproduct of not baking enough because the thickener needs to reach a certain temperature um, to be able to activate properly and become thick enough. So, All right. Well, we have a question from Stephanie Rose. She's saying, I thought it, I always thought it was the pan. So what do you have to say about that? Because it could be. Oh, the time. yeah, the right kind of pan. The right kind of pan definitely helps. Um, one thing I always tell people if they don't want to do... Um, uh, par baking and that seems like a long process, cast iron uh, skillets or cast iron pie plates, which do exist, are wow. actually a great way to skip par baking because it conducts that, it really retains heat and drives heat really beautifully to the bottom. Um, that's a really great way. I also recommend um, if you don't do that, you can also use a baking steel or pizza stone mm -hmm. as a way to drive more heat and retain heat specifically to the bottom. I recommend sometimes that people bake on the like closer to the lower portion of the yes. oven, like especially yes. if the heat is there. And then if you need help browning when the time comes, you can always move it up. Like my baked goods take trips around the oven sometimes because I know yep. my oven. That's another big thing about being a baker, though, is just like, you know, you, you won't learn some of these things without getting a little muscle memory, without knowing your appliances. And everywhere I go, like I've definitely gone to someone's house. And a pie recipe that I've been working on for years and years takes 30 minutes longer at their house because their oven is different. Or, wow. you know, and so that's another thing that I'm just always trying really hard with pie and even with all baked goods. I think it's that French brown thing says it so well. If you know what you're looking for, you don't have to feel so tied down by 25 minutes. 30 minutes. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No. And that's hard for people though. Like I just taught some classes a couple weeks ago. And I, this, it was, um, a, a lady that was in finance and that was in the class and she, I mean, I went to go do something with it with, it was a sauce on the stovetop and I went to go do something with it. She goes, it's got 25 more seconds. And she was just as serious as the day is long. Right. And, and like, didn't want me to touch it. And I'm like, it's okay. You know what I mean? Like, because I always say, that whether I don't care what you're cooking, you have to cook with all your senses, not just your eyeballs looking at the looking at yes, your watch. Yes, yes, completely, right? completely. Oh, and yeah. I, I think that baking with your senses is something that is possible, but people who are like everyone who's a cook does that, right? right? Cooking is done with all of your senses. But I find that even people who are really good bakers aren't always checking in with all those senses and right. that visual cue knowing what it should feel like, look like, that is half the battle of like my pie dough even made perfectly is going to act a little bit differently today than it is in the depths of winter than it is on a hot July day. You know, I and knowing. No, go no, ahead, no, I'm sorry, go. No, well, <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> right. Okay. So, but let's talk about this though. How do people know, like, you, you know, you and I've been doing this for years, right? So, but I guess what, what makes people scared and they want to stumble with this is if you don't know what you don't know, right? For sure. Absolutely. And one of the things that's so wonderful for me about social media and, and Instagram and all of these things is being able to share sometimes more of what's going on. You know, in the book, I only get so many pages dedicated to pictures. Right. So I usually want to show you what it looks like when it's done because ever that's what right. most people want to see. But, you know, on my Instagram, I can cut into this. I can show you the technique for making the top can do all of those things. And I think that visual cues, videos, um, I have host this series called Bake It Up a Notch for Food 52. And I have actually four episodes, nope, five, five episodes about pie. I almost forgot the fifth one that comes out today. Yay! <laughs> and, and guess what, Virginia? It's savory pies. The episode Yay! Today. Oh my God, I can't wait to watch it's it. It's fate. <laughs> It but I, getting some of those visual cues and knowing what you're looking for, I actually think that's another mistake that a lot of people make with pies. They only bake one every year at Thanksgiving. And then next year, they don't remember what they learned, <laughs> you know, which I Great. don't blame them for not remembering Great. that. I wouldn't remember either. Great. Great. But this is given permission. You got to bake it, several pies this year, everybody. <laughs> well, not only that, I mean, you know, I, I, I never recommend, especially if someone's, I mean, I, I am guilty of it, but I cook for a living, right? So I, I never suggest to people that aren't familiar with the kitchen or familiar with a recipe to give it a trial run before they serve it at a dinner party. Like, why put that stress on yourself? Like, once again, I, I can do it, but it's what I do for a living, yeah, right? Yeah, totally, you know, totally. It's my job to know how to, like, punt or, you know, whatever if something goes wrong. 
and I've been cooking for 30 years. But if someone is like, I want to make the world's best Thanksgiving pie, I just suggest that they don't, if they're not a regular baker, that they, they give that pie a dry run, right? They give that totally pie up. Yeah. Practice session, which is a good excuse to eat more pie in yes. my book. And also, if you do snag this book, all the recipes are ranked easy, medium, hard. So if you are wanting to tackle a pie for the holiday for the first time, maybe just choose one of the ones that like, I'm telling you, anyone can do this. You got this. This is a nice, easy pie and everyone's going to love it too. I love it. All right. We have a, we do have a question. Everyone is just, just watching this though. I can see what part of our baking can be done ahead of time. So Teresa put another follow-up in there. Do you mean about uh, with pie or, what, but why, Aaron, why don't you um, sort of take that question about what you think can be done ahead? Yeah, that's one of the things I think actually that people do think with pies is that they cannot be done as much ahead of time because we all think fresh baked pie, right? It has to be fresh. So um, the steps of par baking and blind, first of all, the crust can be made in advance. It can be made up to three days ahead or you can freeze it um, for up to three months uh, is what I say here in the book. Um, any longer in the fridge, the butter will start to oxidize and turn sort of gray. So that's why we only say a couple of days in the fridge or longer in the freezer. Then the par baking and blind baking steps, depending on what kind of pie you're doing, can be done ahead. So if you want to say you're making a pumpkin pie and the recipe says to par bake the crust, you could make the dough two days before Thanksgiving, par bake the crust the day before Thanksgiving. And then the morning of Thanksgiving, all you'd have to do is pour your custard in and bake it. Um, I also want to point out, though, that I strongly suggest that for most pies, pretty much all pies, that they need to cool completely before you slice it. Now, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy it warm. I have instructions for warming it back up. But the pie will become properly set when it is baked fully, and then it has to cool down completely. If you cut into my apple pie, which if you cut into it after it's cooled a little bit, it holds a beautiful slice. If you cut into it when it's hot out of the oven, it's going to juice yeah. and go because yeah. it's still hot. And so if you like that and you enjoy it, again, I'm not saying that you can't do it. But one of the things is that people sometimes are surprised. I actually bake all of my pies fully ahead of things like Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then if I want to warm them, I have this technique for refreshing that is in um, chapter one of this book, where you can kind of warm it back up, recrisp that crust. But it's actually really good for pies to have that chance to cool down and set up for more sliceability. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Well, hopefully, Teresa, that answers your question. So let's talk about, I know we had, you had said that you wanted to go over or you would love to share um, some, some techniques. That would yes. be wonderful. Yeah. I have a couple doughs here in my um, fridge and we kind of talked about this a little bit, but the cool thing, one of the cool things about this book is that it's more than the sum of its parts. Yeah. Um, the dough and crust chapter has something like 40 recipes in it. The toppings chapter has something like 35 or so. And then there's all these different fillings. And the idea is that you can really mix and match I love all of that, these different Aaron. things oh to make your own pies. And I, for years, everybody was always saying to me, I love that you made that rosé peach pie, but could I, I've always wanted a cardamom plum pie. And I wanted to be like, then you can make that. You can make it exactly... <laughs> You just need, here's what you need to know. And so that's what the point of this is, is that maybe people out there can make their own dream pies using mm -hmm. these different components. Yes, I love that. So I have here a couple um, of my, my favorite pie pastry, which is my um, all butter, which I call all butter, butter, the all butter pie dough. And it um, is made for this demo using the extra flaky method. And I wanted to call that out specifically for everybody watching because people ask me, there are five or six different methods of mixing in the book that I talk about. Mm -hmm. And everyone always wants to know which one I use the most. That's the one I use the most is the extra flaky method. Um, and in the extra flaky method, you mix in the butter and then you also uh, go through a couple of folds. It sounds kind of scary, but it's not as intense as something like croissants or anything. Right. It just gives it a little bit of extra layering and it makes the dough what I call flaky AF. <laughs> That's okay, awesome. Okay, so this is some of that in the pan and it's been chilled for a while. I kept it covered in the fridge because it will dry out it, it, mm -hmm. for extended periods of time. And I rolled these at about six this morning. So I, um, 
I'm a baker. Can you tell? <laughs> I can tell. It was so funny when I saw your email this morning. It was like before seven o'clock. I'm like, of course she is. Of course she is. She's she's been up for I hours up by I'm now. Doing pie already. It's fine. yeah. No. Um, so I wanted to start with my my standard crimp, which is the classic finger crimp. Um, I use it, it, this will depend on what your dominant hand is. So my I'm a right handed person. So my dominant hand is this hand. But if you were left, you'd go the other way. Um, you're going to make kind of a V shape with your dominant hand. And then with your non dominant hand, you're going to you're going to press the two towards each other. And you're also kind of going to be pressing down. We're not only making a pretty shape, we're trying to adhere it to the pie plate. So I'm that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just press using the outer, the dominant hand is making mm -hmm. the shape mm -hmm. and the non-dominant hand is the one sort of um, uh, pressing it down yep, to the pie yep. plate more. I so love actually, hold on. patient. It's I mean, you're, you, what, the way you just described basically how to like poke a pie, right? You know what I mean? Like it was like <laughs> you, that was like, I love that. That's so, um, it's just so generous of spirit, frankly. Well, thank you. I, I mean, I, truly do want people to do this like that's yeah. I, I do think that there are lots of different people that people write books for different reasons but i i am not just writing to tell people what i know um which is fun to do it is fun to celebrate like look we have all this knowledge but yeah. for me it's much more enjoyable to be like now you've got it and you can totally do this right. i promise i want my books right. to read like i'm standing in the kitchen like you yes got you got oh this. my god <laughs> yes we're like sisters from another mother I really do think we're kindred, very kindred spirits. <laughs> yes, we've got, okay, we've, yes, er, oh, yeah, we, that's what she says, Erin, you have a great way of teaching. I think that that's so clear. All right, Jimmy Prophet has a question while you're, um, hey, Jimmy, it's good to see you again this week. Um, Jimmy's question is, what's the best way to cool a pie down as you are going through that? Look at that beautiful crimp. Oh, my Ooh. God. <laughs> That's, um, that's a great question, Jimmy, and you may not like the answer because the answer is patience. Ah, <laughs> you can't right, really Jimmy. rush cooling a pie down. If you try to put it into the refrigerator or the freezer, it's going to be sog city for your crust because all the steam from the hot filling inside is just going to stay kind of, tra it's wow. just not a good situation. Yeah. So um, one of the things that you can do though, it is an old adage for a reason, circulation of air will help it cool down faster. So that whole thing about a pie in a windowsill, there is a reason for that. So you, you can do what I do. I do actually sometimes put my pies in the windowsill and oh have a little God. air circulation. That is adorable. <laughs> and yes, and you got to make sure no one snags it, right? Well, luckily, uh, the people in this neighborhood already know they're going to be getting some pie. Oh, yeah. No. Been, so. People <laughs> no who one's your recipe developers steal. love it. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, so this next one is really, really fun and it's really easy and I have to talk about it almost any time I get the chance to do a demo because it's so easy. Um, except I've put my tool in a drawer that I can't access. So here it is. <laughs> oh, um, oh I, how fun. Like, yes, I got the scissors and anyone can do this like 100%. This is a very, very easy. And I think a lot of times when people are looking for an easy crimp, they think about the fork crimp, just pressing the fork in, but I encourage people to like look around their kitchen. You could press your tongs in and it would make kind of a ripply effect. You could use the bowl of a spoon and make kind of little concentric circles or rings. But this, I'm actually borrowing from a bread baking technique. This shape in bread baking is called an epi. Um, it's used for baguette shaping. And in it, you snip the dough and then you kind of fold the pieces in opposite directions. And it sort of has this harvesty wheat sort of look. It's really great for Thanksgiving. It always really impresses. So I just kind of am going in at this angle, which I think you would call probably a 45 degree angle. And about every inch, I'm just gonna make a snip. And at first that's all I'm doing, just circling the pie around and making cuts. And then we'll just go in with our hands and kind of alternate so that different parts of the wheat stalk, as it were, are kind of going in different directions. And I actually worked for a long time as a bread baker, which is why sometimes some of my techniques for pie, actually, they there's inspiration can come from lots of places. So in this case, it came from my bread baking days. The cool thing about this one too, is that uh, it really shows off the layers. So it bakes up in a way 
where people are always kind of like, wow, you can see how flaky it is. And it really blows their minds. Look at that. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. So pretty. Oh, there you Look go. at that. <laughs> Isn't that kind of like a very fall festive yes. one? I just, and it's really, really easy. Anybody can do that. Oh my gosh, that's just easy beautiful. peasy. All right, one more. Okay. Yay. Look at one you. One more. I got one more. <laughs> Y'all, I'm this at Walking Unwrapping That. Let me show you the cover of the book. So make sure to go to my um, Instagram page and feed and look for the cover of the book of pie. You're going to follow the instructions and you're going to enter win a copy. And if you don't win a copy, I want you to buy this book, right? I only have folks on here that I really believe in and I think you should buy it. And this is, um, like we were talking to before, everything you need to know to bake perfect pie. So there you are. Definitive, the end, period, final. Um, really, really super cool book. So thank you, Erin. This one is basically, I'll do it really fast because I know we're towards the end of our time here, but basically I you do the crimp like I uh -huh. did uh, before, just the regular finger crimp, but I'm leaving yep. space in between each crimp. And then after I do it, I'm gonna go back into the in-between spaces with a fork. <gasps> and this, you could just create multiple textures basically, and it looks really, really fancy, but is very easy. And I love the way this one looks. So I love the creativity and it's, they're easy. They're, they're, you're not yes. like, you're not going crazy with cutting out and braiding. Hey, baking a pie that. is hard enough. <laughs> Look at that. Sometimes, sometimes it's difficult enough. We're already spending a lot of time and my baked goods. And I admire all the people that do that incredible stuff because you can, this is a canvas the same way a cake is, the same way sugar cookies are. You can do so much with this. And there are some amazing bakers out there who could run circles around me as far as the decorations are concerned. But for me, what I will say is that I tend to lean into the rust, like the rustic nature of pie. That's one of the things I love about it. Even the prettiest pie is a little bit wonky and even the wonkiest pie is very pretty. Yeah, and then, um. And then, uh, you know, some of the doughs and things like that. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm glad that things are pretty, but I want it to taste good, right? And some of the doughs that are like super manipulated and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's, it's a play dough, which is beautiful. But at the end of the day, what the kind of pie that I want on my plate is a pie that like looks good and tastes good, right? Completely. And, you know, at the end of the day, a homemade pie is almost always going to be better than one you find out unless you're, of course, going to an amazing pie bakery right. where they make incredible pies. But there's just something about making pie at home. It is one of those things, you know, like even I as a baker, sometimes I go to a bakery and I buy a birthday cake, you know, like I, I do mm -hmm. things like that. But man, I love the whole process of making pie at home. I like the way it makes my house smell. I like the way it makes my hands feel. It's creative. Uh, it's comforting. It takes a long time, but it's like something you can kind of nourish along the way. Yeah. And I find that very nourishing in turn. Yeah, I know. Well, it's very meditative. Well, I think that it's so clear about how you feel about the subject and the way that you teach and the way that you write in your videos. I mean, I just folks just, you know, love you. Right. I mean, I think that, and you're bringing this like beautiful subject, um, where, where it's accessible. Well, I have a couple of questions for you as we wrap yes. up. Yes. All right. So I, I'm That's almost funny. like, I'm almost like laughing to ask you. So in terms of flavor, mm -hmm. sour, salty, bitter, sweet, or savory, what's your go-to? It actually really might surprise people that I would lean to salty. Ah, yeah, no. I mean, you never Even know. with my baked goods, they're all, a lot of them are really salty. And this is a little bit of a hot thing because I haven't even fully announced this yet. But my next cookbook is a predominantly savory cookbook. But Yay! it's baking. It's savory Yay! baking. So you were saying the chapter in here that's all about savory pies. It's pizzas. It's breads. It's all kinds of things because I honestly, I love that salty stuff a lot. No, well, that is super exciting and yay you. Cause I do, I think that people like, oh, you're a baker and it's like sweet stuff. I'm like, I, I love to bake, but I like more savory things, right? And it, or- um, I think- or, or a combination, like something that's sweet with some salt or sweet with some Exactly, salt. that's what I was gonna say is I definitely still, still love sweets, but if you make me pick, I, the other thing is that a lot of people don't realize when you are, when you work in pastry, it's 
a little bit like eating dessert at the end of the day. Don't get me wrong. I still love it. But like, I'm almost tired of it. But you know what I never get tired of is a cheese plate. Like ah, everyone at dinner is ordering yeah. a dessert. And I'm like, I'll have a cheese plate because I have already eaten five desserts today. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I feel you. Well, you can never really ever go wrong with a cheese plate, right? <laughs> that's how I feel. Yes. No, that's great. Okay. So of all your tools, so you're so great about like using innovative things. Um, decorating your pies, but what is one of your go-to tools in the kitchen? Like what is something that you just don't I, think you could live without? I think the go-to for me is the bench scraper. Uh, not only because I use it a lot because I'm a dough person, but because I am always throwing flour around and I can just clean it up like that. I couldn't live without it. No. Oh my gosh, we are. That is like my favorite tool too. I have one, like it, it's at hand at my right hand all the time. It's such a great tool for so many different things. So, so many things. You are awesome in terms of like what you put out and how you are, just, it's, you know, it's an overused word, right? But it's like authentic because you are yourself on Instagram. I mean, it is like so clear that you're like no pretense, whatever, you know, here I am, here I am making good pie. Do you want to join me? Um, <laughs> What do you, um, what are some of the folks that you like to watch? I mean, where do you, where do you get your inspiration? That's even probably a better way to put it. I will say probably most of my food inspiration, it doesn't even always come from other food people. I get a lot of inspiration from artists and um, musicians and, you know, there's just like a lot of people out there that I definitely, but in the baking world, there are a few people that I cannot deny as just being, you know, especially wonderful. I love, um, uh, um, here I go. I'm like, I have so many names. I don't sorry. know. Where to start with. I know. <laughs> you know, no. Yossi Arafi is one of my absolute favorites. She wrote an incredible book called Sweeter Off the Vine. And then also last year's big hit Snacking Cakes, which is yeah. an amazing book that everyone should check out. Um, and that book I love. Yossi, similarly, she can celebrate seasonality. Like her first book really celebrates seasonality and fruit, which is something that really inspires me. Yes. Seasonality and like going through the year and being like, wow, right now, this is the moment for grapes. I'm going to just celebrate grapes for two weeks straight. And that's exactly. going to be wonderful. And I, she kind of does that. And it, any, anything that she makes with fruit or um, produce just always really takes my breath away. So she's a great example, I think. That's so awesome. No, thank you for that. Thank you for that reminder. That's true. And that's it. Like, right. People think that like, I mean, baking is seasonal too, just like anything else. And, um, when things are Absolutely. seasonal, it tastes better, it's fresher. So Erin, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the show today. I I, I know that we could just keep going for hours, I think. I don't know, <laughs> I really I don't know how much everyone else would enjoy it, but we would. But I really do appreciate you taking the time. I'm so happy to celebrate your book of pie with you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a blast. And if anyone has any questions, you can find me on Instagram. I'm always taking pie questions there. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, listen, you have a good and safe weekend and um, I'm going to catch up with you later for sure. Yes, I can't wait. Thanks for having me. Okay. Bye-bye. Oh my God, y'all. Wasn't that fun? Isn't that awesome? Okay. Book of Pie, head to Instagram and then um, New York Times bestseller. So you can find it anywhere. I encourage you to support your local and independent bookstores. Um, so do that. Uh, thrilled to have Aaron on today. Got a ton of great guests this fall um, for Cook Fix with Virginia. Um, next week is Carrie Bailey Morey. Um, I think on the 22nd, I've got Dory Greenspan uh, talking to Rose Levy Barenbaum, Bobby Sheely, Rebecca Lang, um, all sorts of great people. So really, really exciting. Please join me every Friday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook and on YouTube. And then afterwards, I upload it to Instagram. So thank you so much for watching. Head out and get the book of pie for your holiday season. All right. Bye now. Bon appetit, y'all.